Recently, a lot of patterns have been calling for the Italian tubular bind off. It's everywhere, especially in patterns for cardigans and sweaters. But after I tried it out, I realized why. Italian tubular bind off is best for one by one rib and brioche stitch because it mimics one by one ribbing. It's beautiful and it gives your stitches this really polished and professional look. I use the Italian tubular bind off on this recent cardigan that I knit and the sleeves are really visible. So every time I look down and see that bind off, it makes me really happy. So in this video, I'll show you my best method for working the Italian tubular bind off in one by one rib, two by two rib knit flat and knit in the round. Couple caveats. So this is an advanced technique. We're using a tapestry needle to sew the bind off. We're not using knitting needles. So this is like level three Mount Everest of bind offs. The second thing is I really recommend practicing on a swatch first, get the steps right, get the tension right, and then work it on your actual project. Lastly, if you're a worrier like me, then you can insert a lifeline into your knitting before you work the bind off. You'll need scissors and a blunt point tapestry needle for this bind off. I'm working one by one rib here. And before I sew my bind off, I'm gonna work two rows of double stockinette stitch. So double stockinette stitch, assuming that you are starting with a knit one, goes like this. All right, we're going to do a knit one like this. And then I'm gonna bring my yarn up to the front, all right, as if I were going to purl. And then I'm just gonna slip this next purl stitch, purl wise, okay? So I'm gonna use my needle and go from the top to the bottom as if I were gonna purl with my yarn up front and slip that stitch right off of my left needle. Then I'll bring my yarn to the back and then I will repeat that all over again. I'll do a knit one, bring my yarn up to the front, slip my purl stitch as if I were gonna purl it, just slip it right off, bring the yarn to the back, and then do it all over again. Knit one, bring the yarn up to the front, slip the purl stitch, bring the yarn to the back, and knit one. Okay, and this is double stockinette stitch. We do it all over again. Yarn up front, we are basically slipping the purls purl wise with our yarn up front, and then just knitting the knits. So yarn up front, slip the purl, bring the yarn to the back, and knit the knit. And we're gonna do this across the whole row. So now we're near the end of our first row. Here's my last knit stitch, and my last stitch is a purl, so I'll bring my yarn up front and slip it purl-wise, bring the yarn to the back, and that is the end of our first row of double stockinette stitch. Amazing. Row two is exactly the same as row one. We're gonna start with a knit stitch because this is a knit stitch. We're gonna knit the knits, so here is my knit one, and I'm gonna bring my yarn up front and just slip this purl stitch purl wise with the yarn up front. So there we go, slip one or slip one purl stitch, bring the yarn to the back and I'm gonna knit the knit stitch. Here's a purl stitch, so I'm gonna bring my yarn up front, slip that purl stitch, bring the yarn to the back and knit the knit stitch. So let's just do this to the end of the row. Here's my last stitch, which is a purl stitch. So I'll bring my yarn up front and slip that purl stitch as if to purl, bring the yarn to the back. And now we have completed two rows of double stockinette stitch. I'm gonna grab my yarn and we're gonna measure out a length that is five times the length of our bind off edge. So that would be this right here. I'm gonna take my yarn and measure out one length, two length, three, four and five, snip that right off. So now I'm gonna take out my tapestry needle, thread that up, and now we're ready to work our Italian tubular bind off. First, we're gonna work two setup stitches. We'll go into these first two stitches just to set us up for the whole sequence. We'll do it once and never again. So assuming that you're starting with a knit stitch, we're gonna go into this first knit stitch as if to purl. So we're gonna go in this way as if to purl and not this way, like when we knit, okay? So I'm gonna take my needle, go into this first stitch, what I'd call purl wise, We'll go in purl wise and then that's our first setup stitch and we need to do work our second stitch here. 
So with this second stitch, this purl stitch, I'm gonna go into it knitwise, but I'm not gonna go this way. I'm actually gonna go from behind. So I'll take my tapestry needle and go between these two stitches, give myself some room, and just grab this purl stitch as if to knit, just like this, from the left into the stitch, coming through the back, and I'll just pull the yarn through, and there we go, I've gone in knitwise. Grab this purl stitch as if to knit, just like this, from the left into the stitch, coming through the back, and I'll just pull the yarn through, and there we go, I've gone in knitwise. So now our first two stitches have been set up and we are ready to work the whole sequence. So I've broken down the bind off into four steps and I've broken it down even further into knit stitches and purl stitches. Now this bind off will refer to either a knit off or a purl on, purl off, knit on, and that just refers to the direction that the needle is going into the stitch. So if it says knit, we're gonna go in knitwise. If it says purl, we're gonna go into it purlwise. So this first step, we're gonna do a knit off. That means I'm gonna go into this first knit stitch, knitwise, and I'm just going to pull the whole stitch right off of the needle, whoa. And then I'll draw the yarn through and give it a slight tug. Okay, so let's move on. We're in our knit section, so I'm gonna look for the next knit stitch, which is right here. I'm gonna do a purl on. And a purl on means I'm gonna go into this knit stitch purl wise, so that would be this way, right? We're not going in knit wise, we're going in purl wise. And the on means that the stitch stays on our needle, unlike our first stitch, which we popped off. So purl on, pull the yarn through, and that's it. Now we're gonna move on to the purl stitches. So let's look for our next purl stitch, which is right here. And I'm gonna do a purl off. So that means I'm gonna go in purl wise, right, like this. And I'm gonna just pop the whole stitch off the needle and draw the yarn through. And that is a purl off. All right, there we go, slight tug. Now we're gonna look for the next purl stitch on our needle, which is right here. And we're gonna do what's called a knit on. And this is what we did when we were working our setup stitches. So it's a little bit complicated, but we'll go through this. We're gonna bring our tapestry needle in between these two stitches, just push in, get a little room. And then I'm gonna swing my tapestry needle over and grab this purl stitch as if I were knitting into it. So here we go, I'm gonna go right over to the left, grab, into that stitch, you can see it coming through the other side, and then pulling the yarn through. And that is a knit on, okay? So that is our four step sequence. Now we go all the way to the very beginning and we do it all over again, all right? So let's look for our first knit stitch, which is right here, and we're gonna do a knit off. So I'm gonna go in knit wise into this stitch, pop it right off the needle, draw my yarn through, great. Okay, so let's look for the next knit stitch, which is right here. Now we're gonna do a purl on. So I'm gonna go into this knit stitch as if to purl, right? And it's staying on the needle, so I just pull my yarn through. Okay, now we're in the purl section. So this is our next purl stitch. I'm gonna do a purl off. So let's go into the stitch as if to purl and just drop it off the needle and pull the yarn through. Now let's look for our next purl stitch, which is right here. And we're gonna do our little weird step, which is our knit on. I'm gonna bring my tapestry needle between these two stitches, just kind of swing it over, grab that leg of the purl stitch, go into the whole stitch as if to knit, and then just draw the yarn through. And that is my knit on. And now we've just completed the four step sequence and we would go right back to the beginning. So let's run through this a couple times. So we're starting with our knit stitches. So here's our first knit stitch. We're gonna do a knit off. So we're gonna go in knit wise and pull the whole stitch off, draw the yarn through, little tug. Let's find our next knit stitch, which is right here. And we're gonna do a purl on. So I'm gonna go into the stitch purl wise and just pull the yarn through. There we go, that is our purl on. Now we're into the purls. So here is our next purl stitch. We're gonna do a purl off. So I'm gonna go into the stitch as if to purl and just drop it right off the needle and pull the yarn, whoops, pull the yarn through. Beautiful. And now we're gonna look for our next purl stitch which is right here and we're gonna do our knit on. So this is our tricky, our tricky little dude. Let's go 
in between these two stitches from the back. And then I'm gonna grab this purl stitch as if I were gonna knit into it, right? So I'm gonna go swing over to the left, go into that stitch, come through on the back side, and then just pull the yarn through. And that is our knit on, okay? And that is all there is to this four step pattern. Okay, we're gonna look for the knit stitches. We're back at the beginning of the sequence. We're working the knit stitches, this one and this one. So we're gonna do a knit off and pull the yarn through. And then we're gonna look for the next knit stitch, which is right here. And we'll do a purl on. The knit stitch stays on the needle. Now we're on to the purl stitches. So we're gonna find it, which is right here, go into it, purl off, pull the yarn through, and then let's look for our next purl stitch, which is right here, and we're gonna do a knit on. So we're gonna go in between those two stitches, grab this purl stitch, just grab it, move our needle through, and then pull our yarn through. We're gonna do a knit off, onto the knit stitch, find the next knit stitch, which is right here, and do a purl on. Find our purl stitches, purl stitch, we're gonna do a purl off. Pull the yarn through. And then our last purl stitch right over here, we're gonna do a knit on. So here we go, knit on. So as you're doing this, when I say tug loosely, what I mean is that how hard you pull on your needle is really gonna affect the tension of your bind off. So you don't want a super tight pull, but just enough of a pull that it's snug up against the stitch. So let's continue working this. We're at the beginning of our sequence. We're gonna go knit off, find the next knit stitch. Here it is. We'll do a purl on. Now let's move on to the purl stitches. Here we go, purl off. And our last stitch, here's our purl stitch, we're going to do a knit on. You can actually repeat you know, the sequence to yourself and it just becomes kind of meditative over time. So for example, you can just repeat to yourself, uh, knit off, purl on, purl off, and knit on. Friends, pals, people of the needle. <laughs> Sounds like a cult. <laughs> people of the yarn. <laughs> My dearest knitters, I am starting a new free email newsletter. You can sign up at the link in the description. I send videos, techniques, new patterns, and just yarn and knitting related things in the atmosphere that I pick and choose. It'll be fun, totally free, never spam, ew. Unsubscribe anytime, although that would make me a little bit sad, single tear. Sign up below and I'll see you in your inbox. <laughs> That's not creepy. <laughs> why, why am I doing this? Why am I sabotaging this? <laughs> Sign up below and we'll have a blast. <laughs> now one tip that I have for you is that if for whatever reason you need to step away from your bind off, like let's say the doorbell rings, the postman is here, um, I would recommend that before you step away, you take out this piece of paper, which is where I've written out my instructions, and you just circle the next step in your sequence. So for me, that would be the knit off. So I would literally, whoops, literally just circle it so that I know that when I come back to my work, I'm starting here. Okay, so we're near the end of our bind off. I'm gonna work my last sequence. I'm on the purl on my knit stitch. Now I'm working the purl off on my purls. My last purl is a knit on. So here's my last stitch, it's a purl stitch. So I'm gonna go in between these last two stitches and just grab that purl stitch as if to knit into the back side, pull the yarn through, and then I'm gonna work my knit off because this is a knit stitch, knit off. And my last stitch is a purl stitch, so we'll do a purl off. There we are. So now I have just completed the Italian tubular bind off and look at it, look how pretty it is. Oh my gosh. So you can see that the bind off just looks so invisible and even at the edge, it just kind of curls off into one seamless piece. It's perfectly reversible, it looks fabulous. So the last step I'm gonna do is into this little leg of the net stitch, I'm going to just 
go into it one more time. So I'll take my needle and just go into the stitch again and then just kind of tighten up that last leg. I'll give it a little bit of a tug. And now that last stitch is pretty secure on the end. I think it looks fantastic. So that is how you bind off with the Italian tubular bind off. Practice until you remember the steps and your tension is perfect. So that was the Italian tubular bind off. Not, not too bad, right? Like, like a little bad, but not like crazy. So this four step process is the foundation of this bind off. Whether you're working one by one, two by two, or working in the round, it always comes back to this four step process. I've also included a blog post linked in the description in case you need to see this whole process written out with photos and all that. Next, I'll show you how to work this bind off in two by two rib. It involves getting your stitches in formation. Stitches get in formation. So stitches in formation, then we'll work two rounds of double stockinette stitch and then right back to the four step process. So when we're binding off with two by two rib, we need to reformat these stitches so that they are in a one by one rib format. So I'm gonna start by knitting my first stitch. However, the next stitch is a knit stitch and we cannot have that. We want a purl stitch. So how I'm gonna do this is I'll turn my left needle over and I'll use my right needle to insert it into these next two stitches, just like this, okay? So I'll show you how I'm doing that again. This is how our stitches look on the right side. Now I'm turning my left needle over and with my right needle, I'm just gonna go into these next two stitches right here. Just insert my needle into those two stitches and then just slide them right off the needle and I'm gonna turn back to the right side. Now I'm gonna slip these two stitches back onto my left needle and now you will see that like magic, our stitches have switched positions. So this is now a purl stitch and this is now a knit stitch, okay? So you can look at it a little bit closely. You can see that this is indeed a purl stitch. Look at that little purl, right? So now we are ready to work double stockinette stitch in one by one rib. So I've just done a knit stitch. Next, I'm gonna bring my yarn up front and slip that purl stitch onto my right needle, bring the yarn to the back. Now this is a knit stitch, which is exactly what I need because I want this to be a knit one, purl one configuration. So I'm gonna knit this knit stitch. So we're doing two things in one go. We are switching the position of our stitches while also knitting double stockinette stitch. We did a knit one, purl one, knit one. Now the next stitch I want is gonna be a purl stitch and we actually have that right here. Okay, so I'm gonna bring my yarn up front and slip that stitch as if I were gonna purl bring the yarn to the back, and there we are. Now our next stitch is a knit stitch, which is exactly what we want, so I'm gonna knit that knit stitch. Now, we have come to a problem. This next stitch is a knit stitch, but it really needs to be a purl stitch, right? Because right now we have a knit, purl, knit, purl, knit. We should have a purl stitch. Now we need to do our little switcheroo. So I'm gonna turn my needle over, my left needle over, with my right needle. I'm just gonna grab these two stitches right here. I'm gonna push my needle, right needle into it, and then just drop it off the needle, turn my needle back to the right side, transfer these two stitches over to the left needle, and now my reformatting is complete. Now our purl stitch is right here where we need it. So I'm gonna bring my yarn up front, slip that purl stitch purl-wise with the yarn up front, bring the yarn to the back, knit the net stitch, Next, I need a purl stitch and we have a purl stitch right here. So the yarn will go up. We will slip that purl stitch as if to purl, bring the yarn to the back, knit the next stitch, perfect. And now we need to do a switcheroo because we've got a knit stitch and we really need a purl stitch. So we need to reformat our stitches. So let's turn our needle over, use our right needle, grab those two stitches, okay? And just drop them off the needle Boop, there we go. Turn our needle to the right side, transfer these stitches back to the left needle. Now our reformatting is complete. Bring the yarn to the front, slip that purl stitch over, bring the yarn to the back, knit the knit stitch, 
bring the yarn to the front, slip the next purl stitch over, bring the yarn to the back, knit the knit stitch, and now we need a new formation. I can just switch the stitches around and bring them back into the position that I want them to be. So we would work this to the end of the row. Do a quick switcheroo here. Last three stitches. And here we go. Let's slip that purl stitch, yarn to the back, knit one, and our last stitch I'm going to slip, bring the yarn to the back. Great. So we've done one row of double stockinette stitch, and now we're going to do our second and last row of double stockinette stitch. Now the second row is going to be a lot easier because we've done the hard work on the first row of switching around all of our stitches. So on the second row, it's going to be significantly easier. We're going to start by doing a knit one, yarn up front, slip the purl stitch as if to knit, bring the yarn to the back, knit one, yarn up front, slip the purl stitch as if we were purling with the yarn up front, yarn to the back, knit one. Okay, and we're just going to speed through this second row. Here's my last knit stitch, and my last stitch is right here. So I'm going to bring my yarn up front and slip it. And there we go. We've just completed two rows of double stockinette stitch. So we're going to measure out a length of yarn that is five times the length of what we want to bind off. So that would be this edge. I've done one, two, three, four, and five. Snip that right off. And now I can thread up my tapestry needle with the yarn. So you would bind off in the exact same way that we did for the one by one rib. So please go back to this timestamp in the video and just work those instructions. And the finished two by two rib bind off looks like this. It's so beautiful and seamless. I can imagine this on the cuff of a sleeve or turtleneck. It would be so gorgeous. So when we're knitting in the round, we're going to do something very similar. We're going to start with two rounds of double stockinette stitch. Now double stockinette stitch in the round starts like this. The first round is going to be knit one. And this is assuming that you are doing a knit one purl one rib, one by one rib. So we're going to start with a knit one. And then I'm going to bring my yarn up front and then just slip this first purl stitch. Okay. As if to purl. Then I'll bring my yarn to the back and knit one. And that is really the whole repeat. Yarn up front, slip the purl stitches as if to purl, bring the yarn to the back and knit the knit stitch. Okay. The first round is the exact same as double stock and that stitch flat. Okay. Here we go. Knit the knit stitch, bring the yarn up front and slip the purl stitch as if to purl, bring the yarn to the back. Okay, and we're just going to repeat that across the whole first round. My last stitch is a purl stitch, so I'll bring my yarn up front and slip it as if to purl, bring the yarn to the back. And that is the end of my first round of double stockinette stitch. So our second round of stockinette stitch, we're going to do the opposite of what we did in the first round. Instead of knitting the knits, we're going to slip the knits. Here's my first stitch, which is a knit stitch. Instead of knitting it, I'm going to slip it purl wise. So I'm going in from the top and then just slipping it off the needle. And with the purl stitch, I'm going to purl it. So I'm going to bring the yarn to the front and purl that purl stitch. Okay. And here's a knit stitch. So I'm going to slip it purl wise, bring the yarn to the front, purl the purl stitch. Okay. Bring the yarn to the back, slip the knit stitch as if to purl right off the needle bring the yarn up front and purl the purl stitch. So we're doing the opposite of what we did in the first round, slipping the knit stitches and purling the purl stitches. Here we go. Knit stitch off the needle, yarn up front, purl the purl stitch. So let's continue that across the whole round, slipping the knits and purling the purls. Here's my last knit stitch, which I'm slipping and my last stitch, which is a purl stitch and I am purling it. Great. So now I've finished two rounds of double stockinette stitch. We're going to estimate five times the length of what we're binding off. So in our case, that would be this length. I'm going to measure out one length roughly. And then from there, I'm going to just measure out five lengths of that. So I'm going to go two and three, four 
and five. Cut off my yarn and let's thread it up. So head over to this timestamp in the video and follow the exact same directions for the four step bind off. Then come back here and I'll show you how to end the bind off in the round. All right, so I'm near the end of my bind off in the round. I'm going to do a knit on onto this last purl stitch, knit on, here we go. And then we're gonna do a knit off. And my last stitch is a purl stitch, so we'll do a purl off. So now we have completed our bind off in the round. Look at that, look how pretty it is. If you take a look at the join, you may notice that it's a little bit messy. There's this gap here. So we can actually close up this gap. You can see this is the first knit stitch at the beginning of the round. So I'm just gonna insert my tapestry needle into these two legs, the little Vs at the beginning of the round, bring the yarn through, and then now I have just closed up that gap and I can flip my knitting to the wrong side and then continue to close up that gap even further. And now when you look on the right side, you can see that it closes up really neatly. So that is how you bind off with the Italian tubular bind off in the round. We've reached the end of this video. I hope that you are now confident to tackle the Italian tubular bind off. It's a really good one to have in your arsenal, especially if you're binding off any kind of ribbing. But once again, sign up for my free newsletter. It's good stuff like knitting videos, techniques, tips, patterns, all from me, link in the description. Give this video a like if you liked it and subscribe if you wanna see more videos like this one. Every like that you give sends a message to other viewers that this video is a good one and that they should watch it. So it's always a free Appreciated. All right, that's it for me. I'm Davina from sheepandstitch.com and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.